Watching the Aussie Bim Guru, and today we've reached part five of my Dual Family series. And today we're going to be specifically looking at a pretty interesting topic. Um, so this is going to be looking at what I call reference hosting, essentially using a reference line as the host to enable an openable door leaf and also nested hardware. Now this is a very different approach to what we've done so far, which is why I've sort of saved it for a little bit later in the series. But it probably is my recommended approach once you're comfortable uh, building Dual Families. Um, so reference hosting. So we've looked at um, how to build all the various little components of our family so far. We've looked at building face hosted hardware, we've looked at door leaves, hinges and frames, um, and now we're going to look at how we can host them differently. So originally we used reference lines in order to open up our door. Now as most of you probably found out, this is quite a difficult method and whilst it is important to learn how to use reference lines like this, we're going to sort of go a little bit off course now and show a simpler way um, that is easier once you understand how it works. Um, so we've used lots of reference lines and angles. Instead, we're gonna be using just one single reference line to act as the pivotable host for a lot of elements at the door level. Now in the next part, we're gonna be looking at how we can swap over hardware sets as well. Um, and this relies on this approach because you can't swap out hardware sets if they're nested inside another family. They need to exist at the family surface level because you can't make a family type parameter associate as a nested parameter. Okay, so um, without further ado, we're gonna get started. So I'm using Revit 2020 build 2.2. Um, so I'm just gonna jump straight in and show you what our aim is in this session. So at the moment I've got a door leaf, I've got a hardware set, and these both exist at the door level. And I've also retuned my opening parameter so that everything just opens together. And if I change the width of my door, so if I make it say 1020, everything updates. And the good thing about this is that everything is just working off a single reference line. So we're gonna get started. Um, I'm just gonna close this and use the, the reference uh, content off of GitHub, um, which you should definitely go and download from the last part. Um, so it should have just a set of folders of content like this. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna open up the door that we built previously. And at the moment, you remember we had all these nested components all sitting inside the door leaf. Now we're gonna break all these components out of the door leaf and put them all at the project level. Now I'm just gonna focus on the handle and the door with its protection. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna open up my door leaf. So I'm just gonna go and find that door leaf in my content under the leaf subfolder, and I'm just gonna open up this leaf. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get rid of all of these these elements, like we'll get rid of the handles because we're going to break those out. And I'll keep the leaf and the hardware. Now I'm just going to deconstrain everything at this point. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I've got my protection deselected. And I'm just going to deconstrain everything because we have all these angles and dimensions and it's quite complicated. Um, so what I'm going to do in this case is just delete, uh, need to get rid of as many reference planes as I can and as many dimensions as I can. Now I haven't gone crazy. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate all these elements back into an orientation that suits, uh, I guess, a linear family. And I'm just going to make it so the corner of my door leaf sits on my reference or my origin reference. That's just because I want to make sure that my protection is still hosted to my door. Um, but what I'm going to do instead is just turn this into just a linear family. So I'm going to create a reference plan with RP. I'm going to associate this to the leaf width by using the width parameter. And I'm also going to create a reference plane for the back of my door. And I'm just going to use the leaf thickness parameter for this. I do need to go back to my extrusion and just reconstrain everything so that it's parametrically driven. And I'll also need to take my door protection, which is currently face hosted, you might remember. And I'm just going to go and align it to the edge of the door again. So now everything should be parametrically constrained just in a linear dimension so it can flex from its origin. So if I go and change this to say uh, a different width like 1020, we should expect that everything grows together in one direction. Now remember these are nested families so we're just nesting the width into the nested component but it's face hosted to the extrusion. 
Now you could put the protection um, at the, the leaf level as well. Um, usually I find the protection doesn't need to be shared um, and, and occur at the project. It really is a part of the overall leaf definition. So that's why I haven't broken out the protection, just the hardware, because the hardware is quite interchangeable on a project. Okay, so at this point we have um, essentially a door leaf. Now the challenge is if we put this into our door, it's gonna be very critical that we understand where our origin point is. So what I usually like to do is just put something that sort of shows where the origin is. So I'm just gonna, in this case, create an invisible line, a symbolic invisible line. I'm gonna stop it being a reference so I can't dimension it. Um, and I'm also just gonna make it only show up at course. And this is just like a little helper. So I'm just gonna draw a little arrow. And the reason why I'm only letting it show up at course is because I don't wanna see it in my project because nested components do show these elements, even if they're part of an overall assembly. So I don't wanna see this arrow. And typically I don't use course for anything in a model except for really raw views where I'm just working. So in this case, it might be more helpful to see it here. So I'm just gonna save as, and I'm just gonna save this as door leaf type two. But essentially this is a whole different way of doing a door leaf. Now in this case, I can get rid of some of my parameters. I can get rid of the hardware finish. I can probably get rid of my handle inset. I'll keep my handle height. Um, I don't really have to worry about the hinge gap anymore. Um, Cause in this case, we're just, just swinging it from the corner of our frame. Uh, I'm not opening it anymore. So I don't have to worry about the angle. Uh, we will set up a way to do this. Uh, I'll just turn off the closer and the panic bar parameters. We don't need those. And I'll just call my family uh, just typical. Now you could also at this point say that your leaf is shared as well. If you want to count the number of leaves you have at the project, um, which we will do in this case, because we are going to make interchangeable door leaves in the next part of the series as well. Okay, so at this point we have our door leaf. We have a little helper. So we know which way we're facing. Um, let's add some swing lines to our door as well. So you could do them as 2D lines, uh, but a lot of people I've seen, they like to make them 3D so that when you open the door leaf, the swing lines move with the door leaf in 3D as well. So in this case, I do need to define this plane as the back plane so I can draw on it. So I'm gonna draw some model lines and this is already the front plane. So I'm just gonna go to my front plane. Um, in this case, this should be my left and my origin plane. So I'm gonna be swinging like this. I'm doing the Australian swing direction, um, which is different to a lot of other countries, which do the opposite. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna create a reference plane in the middle, <clears throat> and I'm gonna offset that plane vertically by the handle mounting height, the handle height. I'm gonna create a model line, and I'm just gonna use in this case, um, I might make a new object style. I'm gonna to go to manage object styles, and I'm just gonna create a, a style called elevation swing. Now I do like to make one for elevation, one for plan, so that you can graphically differentiate how they look. Because sometimes elevation swings, people make them hidden um, in style and plan swings solid. And sometimes they make their plan swings gray, elevation swings black. So it's good to keep them separate. Anyway, at this point, I'm just gonna literally draw from the corner using this, uh, this new style. So I do need to change my subcategory to uh, elevation swing projection. And you should get these little little implied snaps, hopefully. We might need to extend this just across so I can actually get a snap point. But model lines should sort of pick up intersections with reference lines. And we can just test that just by changing the size of our door to say 1800 by 600. And you see that our model lines sort of know what to do. As well as that, I'm just gonna probably hide these and I'm just gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it on the other side. So I'm gonna go model line, but now I'm gonna draw on the back instead. And I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. Get that snap, snap. And now we should have some 3D lines that we can see as a swing. Great. And what I'm gonna do is just take those and I'm gonna make them not show up in plan um, or cut in plan, perfect. So now we should have some swing lines that will show up in elevation when we see them, but also in 3D, so you can see which way your doors are swinging in 3D as well. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna load this into our door again um, as an alternative element. Now I'm just gonna take my leaf and delete it. It's gone. I'll keep my hinge set. Now what I'm gonna do is go to floor plan, and I'm gonna need to create a reference line from this point that hinges upon this point here. And this is where we're gonna host the reference line that's gonna hold onto our door leaf. So this is sort of where the trick comes into play. So I'm gonna make a reference line and I'm just gonna use this to control the end of the angled reference line. 
Now I'm gonna I'm gonna make it go all the way back to the, the other side of the door frame, just in case the rebate would ever become zero for some reason, because then obviously our reference line would compress to zero and break. So we need to be careful that these don't break. So I'm just gonna isolate category. And that's just so I can draw another reference line with absolute confidence that I'm hosting to that little point on the end of the reference line. Because we did learn in previous versions of this door that reference lines can host each other on their points. So when this, when this line moves around, this angled line will move with it. What I do need to do is create a angle dimension between them. So I'm just gonna isolate these elements and I'm just gonna create a dimension. And this will be my door angle. So we can go back and re-associate re that 3D angle to those reference planes, which is currently zero um, at the moment. Uh, so what, actually, so what we do want to do at this point, that's going to be 90. So we do actually want to change this. Um, we do want this to actually be going across instead. Apologies. Yeah, so that, that, that's actually wrong. So actually we can just go the other way. We can go from here to here and make that our angle. Cool. And let's just set this to a non-zero angle. Let's say we want to open our door by 30 degrees. And now you can see that that is going to remain. Now this is like an infinite length reference line. It's not constrained to an end at the moment and it doesn't need to be. Now the trick we're going to do here is we're going to go and create a door leaf and we're going to place it on a work plane. We're going to pick and we're going to pick a plane. Now I'm going to pick the reference line as my plane. And I think I've done this right. Sometimes I find this doesn't work the first few times I do it. There's a very particular way you need to do this step. But I believe this should work. Okay, so there's one more step um, that needs to be done here that I've just remembered. Um, in the door leaf itself, um, you do need to tick off this always vertical box. Um, for some reason, this will not let the family move with reference lines if it's ticked on. Um, very strange, uh, because I guess the family is still vertical technically. Anyway, so I've, I've just updated that door leaf. And now if we go component, place on work plane, pick, and we just pick a plane and we pick our reference line. And before I go and do anything, I'm just going to go and associate some parameters such as the leaf height, the leaf width, and the leaf thickness, because they pretty much drive most of the condition. And I just align without locking. So I just go align, align, and then align, align, but I'm not constraining. Now we should just be able to change our angle and check it out our door now angles with the reference line. And as long as you make sure that your line grows away from the junction of the reference line, so the family grows away from that point, it will also pick up changes in size. So if I make this say a 1500 wide door, notice everything moves together. So this is a little bit of an easier way to host elements um, to a, an angled condition. Um, so we can see we've successfully added in a leaf and I can see where that sort of junction occurs now. Um, we could obviously go and nest heaps of parameters, um, like the handle height, etc. Um, I'll probably do this in the version that I just put on GitHub at the end, um, but I probably won't do it, I guess, right now, because it's obviously not very exciting. Um, but what we're going to do now is just turn this thing into a set of door handles. So I'm just going to go back into my door leaf type 2, and I'm going to resave this, because we want to use the same sort of framework that we've just established. Uh, for our door in order to create other elements because they do need to consider the entire size of the door because we obviously can't dimension from the end of the door in because we no longer have those reference lines to work with. We just have that reference line that everything works across. So in this case, I'm going to go to handles or hardware and I'm just going to, I'm going to create a family and I'm just going to call it handle set type one. And in this case, we're pretty much getting rid of everything to begin with. We just want this infrastructure that we've already established. I'm just gonna increase my scale here so we can read those parameters. Now I'm gonna to have to go back and get my initial door handle that I made on a face-based relationship. So I'm gonna to go to content and I'm gonna get my hardware. And in this case, I'm just gonna take my face-based door handle and I'm just gonna copy all the elements from it. I'm gonna make a new family. And in this case, I'm just gonna use a generic model just a standard generic model template. I'm just gonna quickly clean it out. So I'm just gonna get rid of the fill patterns. Oops. I'm 
I'm going to get rid of the line patterns. Now there is some Dynamo scripts I typically use for this, so I might do a tutorial on these quite soon. And I'm just going to hold down delete and just get rid of all the materials. Do a purge. Change the category to doors. And I'm just going to copy and paste my door handle. Now currently it's sitting on the ground, so I do need to go to left view and just rotate everything by 90. I'm just going to move it back so it's centered and also move it so it's centered. Perfect. So at this point, I pretty much have what I need. Um, I'll just double check that it's still got a material parameter. It does. I'll just call this uh, typical. Now this is going to be a non-shared family. It's just here so that we don't have to model and constrain this set of geometry um, in the door handle set itself. So we've pretty much got what we need. So I'm just going to do a save as, and I'm going to save this. And I'm just going to call this um, nested handle type one. And I'm going to load this into my door handle set that I'm working on. And now I should be able to place this. You can see I can place it on here. I'll just make it a work plane based family as well, actually. Work plane based. Great, I'll load that back into my set. So I'm going to place two. So the first one I'm just going to place here and the second one I'm just going to mirror. So this is going to be my external handle and my internal handle. So I'm going to add some shared parameters. So I'm going to add a visibility parameter, a shared parameter. And from my shared parameter file, I just use a parameter called um, is handle external. I'm going to set that to a visibility parameter. Now I'm using shared parameters because we're going to be building other handle sets that we're going to want to swap between. Now if they all use the same shared parameter, they'll know how to maintain any nested relationships at the primary uh, level in the door. I'm also going to add a internal handle as well on an instance basis, make it a visibility parameter. And I'm just going to add a little dimension in, dimension it. I'll make this uh, 50. And I'll just associate a shared parameter to this as well. So I'm going to add the dimension for doors. And I've got a handle inset parameter. So I'll make an instance based parameter. And then you just go and align these two handles. Whoops. Right. And I'm just going to take both of these handles and I'm going to offset them by, in this case, 900, because they're, they're hosted to the reference level at the moment. And I'm just going to associate a parameter to that offset. So I'm going to go add parameter, shared parameter. I'm going to add a dimension for doors. And I'm going to add the handle mounting height parameter as an instance based parameter. And at this point, we just have two handles floating in space, essentially. But around them, we have this sort of framework uh, that will match our door leaf. Um, so we can see in this case, it's, it's pretty much the same extent. Just different elements, I guess, in this case. Um, it looks in this case like we do need to change. Actually, we can just get rid of this reference plane. We don't need it. We'll just do a really quick cleanup. Um, just get rid of some of the things that we're not using. External, external, so we don't need all of these. And we don't need these. Uh, we don't need protection. So it is important to try and get rid of all the redundant parameters, just, just in case someone comes in and gets confused by them. And we'll just nest a, a hardware finish as well. And again, we'll do that as a shared parameter. So I have a material section for my doors and I'll just make the hardware parameter instance based. Okay, so at this point, we're gonna load this into our door. So I'm gonna load this into my single swing door. And the great thing about the way this system works is you can just take this copy move it away and just do zero. So copy it to the exact same place. You'll get a warning that there's identical instances in the same place. That's fine because it's still hosted to the same reference line. So we can just quickly swap that to our handle set. And we can just reassociate some parameters such as the hardware finish, uh, the handle inset, the handle mounting height, and then we've got our two parameters for whether the handle's on or off externally. For now, we'll just leave them as they are. And the great thing about this system is that now if we make a change to say the leaf width 720, notice it still remains in that same relationship. So we've essentially set up a more flexible and easy to expand upon system. 
Now you could obviously build a door closer and a door panic bar in the exact same way. You just have to make sure they have the overall sort of framework that holds them together as a leaf. And you could do the same thing for double doors. You'd have to model a leaf on the other side and it would be a really flexible, easy system to expand upon. Now in future, I might actually adjust my own doors um, to do this when I do my Revit 2021 doors. Um, and there's some other benefits that will come with this as well, such as parametric voids that can be turned on and off, which are super handy for vision panels. Um, but anyway, this is like a, probably a more simple system once you understand how it works. And just remember that these can't be set to vertical. They have to be flexible enough. Um, but otherwise, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next part, we're going to look at exploring uh, this field here, the label parameter. And we're going to show how we can swap over sets at the project level, which is really important. Anyway, um, that's pretty much all for this presentation. So um, the files are on GitHub. Um, so definitely make sure you download those for the next part, where we're going to expand upon what we've learned in this part. Um, so I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. I make about two videos a week and aim to do so for a while. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks. Take care.